In the Gulf War, Iraq says it sunk five tankers at Iran's main oil terminal on Har Island. Iraq says its air force with naval support sank the five tankers in an attack last night. But it doesn't name the ships or say which flag they were flying. And there's so far been no confirmation of the claim from Iran or any other source. A few minutes ago, Lloyds, quoting one of their agents in the Gulf, said it considered that report unfounded. Otherwise, it said at least one vessel would have sent an SOS. From the Middle East, Graham Leach. Iran's main oil terminal on Hag Island has frequently come under attack since the Gulf War started over two years ago, with the Iraqis seeking to cripple Iran's oil exports. To this end, Iraq last August declared a naval exclusion zone covering the head of the Gulf and warned all foreign tankers not to enter the area. This reported attack on the Iranian installation comes at a time when the Gulf War is in one of its most crucial phases, with the Iraqis trying to counter a recent Iranian thrust by up to six miles across the frontier into Iraqi territory. President Saddam Hussein of Iraq has agreed to mediation in the conflict, but the Iranians have said they intend to press on until all their conditions for an end to the war have been met, including, it seems, the overthrow of the Iraqi leader. Palestinian forces in Lebanon have allowed newsmen to visit some of the Israelis they're holding prisoner. One group of six Israelis were part of a patrol taken prisoner in the Bekaa Valley in September. They say since their capture they've been well treated and have been allowed regular visits from the International Red Cross. The fate of these six and another five Israelis in Palestinian hands now depends on negotiations through the Red Cross. The PLO want to exchange them for over 2,000 Palestinians still in detention camps in South Lebanon. In Turkey, a fire at an Istanbul nightclub has killed 20 people and injured a further 31. Most of the dead were suffocated by smoke. The fire was started by an exploding gas heater in the nightclub's kitchen. A continuing sit-in by prostitutes led to angry scenes today at the Church of the Holy Cross at King's Cross, London. Morning service had to be held in a nearby sports hall because the church is occupied by the prostitutes. They're protesting against what they say is police harassment. Nicholas Witchell was there. When the prostitutes indicated that they wouldn't move, priests led some of the worshippers from the occupied church across the road to a sports hall. Other worshippers, though, stayed behind to argue with the women, one of whom appeared at the church door wearing a black mask. I, mean, I want to go into my church. This is very upsetting, isn't it? It's very upsetting on, on behalf right. of our families. What has happened is that the vicars have decided to hold the service elsewhere. Well, that is why there is no there. service today, because he's over there, there over in the Tunbridge Club. Yeah, but he Your should presence. serve it in there. Are there not tarts in there? No, they're just... All the girls have got a living to earn are in Argyle Square. They can't take a week off to sit around doing nothing. You have twisted feminists in there. Inside the church, the women sat in a line in front of the altar, insisting that they will stay and disputing suggestions that they prevented morning service. You haven't tried to come into the service. If you had come into the service, you would have seen that in no way had we prevented it. We were not here when the service was supposed to be uh, taking place. We were at the back of the hall sitting quietly with our children, as we have done with every service that has taken place since we occupied. The church authorities are now being pressed by some parishioners to evict the women, but at the moment it seems there are no plans to do so. That it is contrary to our belief to use force in, this, in these circumstances. At the moment I have the support of the Bishop of London, the Bishop of Edmonton, who is this, the area bishop, of my church wardens, of a former church warden who is a justice of the peace. So um, what, are, what are you going to do, Father? They will have to sit it out. It looks as if there'll be no Daily Telegraph printed in London tonight because of the continuing dispute involving members of the print union SOGAT 82. Efforts have been made during the day to get talks going again, but so far there's been no progress. The union's general secretary, Mr Bill Key, says, unless the dispute is settled, I have no doubt that we could see the ultimate demise of the Telegraph and the eventual loss of up to 6,000 jobs. 
The Energy Secretary, Mr Nigel Lawson, says he has no intention of resigning over the recent issue of shares in Brit Oil. Labour's Environment Spokesman, Mr Gerald Kaufman, had said he didn't see how Mr Lawson could survive following the heavily undersubscribed sale. But Mr Lawson says Mr Kaufman's dismay is an index of the government's success. Tens of thousands of small shareholders now hold shares in Brit Oil, he said. This afternoon, Jewish ex-servicemen and women from all parts of the United Kingdom assembled in Whitehall for their annual service of remembrance at the Cenotaph. They represented the 60,000 British Jews who served with the forces of the Crown in the last World War. The reviewing officer at the ceremony in memory of fallen comrades was Lieutenant General Sir Stuart Pringle, Commandant General of the Royal Marines, who lost a leg in an IRA terrorist attack just over a year ago. The service was conducted by the Chief Rabbi, Sir Emmanuel Jakubowicz. John Paul has ended his visit to Sicily with another strong condemnation of the Mafia. In the capital, Palermo, the Pope walked to an open-air mass through streets he said were too long blooded by violence. He called especially on young people to build a future for Sicily in which the Mafia attitude would be isolated and destroyed. Sicilian bishops recently named the Mafia for the first time in threatening to excommunicate its followers. On this visit, the Pope has thrown himself fully behind the local church leader's campaign. A man wanted for questioning by Nottinghamshire police after the death of his wife has been found dead in Libya. Detectives had wanted to interview 35-year-old Mr. Ralph Savory after the body of his wife, Pamela, was found in a shallow grave in Sherwood Forest last week. She'd been missing since September. Mr. Savory was found hanging in his room at an oil refinery near Tripoli, where he worked. The Lombard RAC rally began this morning in York, and the leader after five stages is the Finn, Hanu Mikola, last year's winner in an Audi Quattro. The highest placed British driver is Terry Caby, driving a Vauxhall Chevette in joint fourth place. Harry Gration reporting. It was hardly an ideal start to the rally's golden jubilee. The rain lashed down and the world's fastest drivers worried about the conditions they'd be facing over the next four days. The first stage in the grounds of a stately home near Leeds began in torrential rain, with several drivers losing time in the mud. Most were gently feeling their way round and trying to stay on the tarmac. Mikado's Quattro was equal fastest here, with the rest not far behind. But afterwards, there were complaints of severe handling problems caused by aquaplaning. And that's all from me for the moment. I'll be back with more news at a quarter past nine. Good evening to you. Well, I can certainly think of better rallying weather. The reason for the heavy rain, incidentally, was this cold front, which is working its way south-eastwards now. It'll have virtually have cleared the country by tomorrow. Then it'll be much colder weather, certainly for southern areas. A fair number of showers as those two lows move away northeastwards, followed later tomorrow by the next low there. So unsettled, and certainly for tonight's weather, it's going to stay unsettled in uh, the north of the country because having moved the rain away, you've still got a fair number of showers, and those showers, I think, will continue right through the night, some of them turning out to be wintry. And not only that, with skies clearing and the winds decreasing just a shade, you'll find a frost up there as well by the end of the night, even down to some of these more central parts. So far as the rain goes, I think most of that rain will have cleared away by the morning, but it might still be fairly close to the 
extreme southeast. And for tomorrow, that's going to leave some southeastern areas a bit cloudy to begin with, but I think the weather should brighten up there all right. And then you'll find it turning out to be a cool day, a day of showers and sunny intervals, most of the showers in the north and west where they'll be heavy and wintry. And that's it.